Good evening and welcome. Tonight we'll be going over the history of the United Arab Emirates. The United Arab Emirates, or the UAE, or just the Emirates, are located on the Arabian Peninsula in Western Asia. You can see it has a long coastline on the Persian Gulf and a little bit of a coastline on the Gulf of Oman. It has this long border here with Saudi Arabia and this really interesting border with Oman, mostly because Oman has an exclave up here and also a tiny enclave right there. And actually there is an Emirati enclave within the Omani enclave. <laughs> Very interesting. Also the Al Hajar Mountains cut right up through here, which is why this border is very jagged. It's going around some big mountain peaks. There's also lots of wadis that flow down from the mountains, which are riverbeds that fill up with water during the wet season and completely dry out during the hot dry season. There's also some oases here along the border. You can see Al Ayn and Al, goodness I always forget. I can't see here either. Briani. Br Briani. Anyway, I've learned in researching that the way we pronounce like Arabic places in English are far different from how they're pronounced in actual Arabic. So I've gotten really confused. Anyway, we're not going to worry about it. This long border you can see is a very straight line, which if you know my channel, you know that Mother Nature does not make straight lines. So this is a man-made border. And most of the time when you have a straight line border, that means that there's nothing there to delineate the border. And that is so very true here. This is part of the Rub al Khali, the largest stretch of nothing but sand in the world. And it flows into a lot of the Emirates, in particular Abu Dhabi. It is just sand. Here and there, there's some oases. There's um, a little arc of oases down here in Abu Dhabi. But for the most part, it's a lot of nothing. Along the coast here, that lot of nothing mixed with the ocean water and air has created some salt flats. You can see them marked over here. And there's a bunch over here. This whole area is the Emirate of Abu Dhabi, and it's by far the largest of all the Emirates, and it has lots and lots of islands out here in the Persian Gulf. This one right here I'll mention briefly in its history, it's called Sir Banias, and essentially this island was nothing, and uh, the sheik uh, Sheikh Said decided to turn it into like a safari kind of nature reserve, so it's teeming with wildlife now. But by far the most important island in Abu Dhabi is right here, the island of Abu Dhabi, where the capital city of Abu Dhabi is located. Abu Dhabi, obviously being the capital, is the center of the government, and all the administrative know-how throughout the Emirates and not to mention Abu Dhabi's extensive oil production. You can see some little oil friends out here in the Persian Gulf. A lot more out here. There's some even inland. Abu Dhabi is just overflowing with oil underneath it. It's led to a lot of wealth for the country, which we'll talk about in its history. Now, before I go any further, this map is cool for a lot of reasons, but not for the fact that it doesn't show you the actual borders of the Emirates. So let me open this book and show you the map that's in here. It's really good for showing you a lot of the features, but not so much the actual Emirates themselves. There we go. So you can see just how big Abu Dhabi is. It takes up the majority of the country. And like I said, this is all desert down here. It's a lot of nothing, and even up into Dubai. 
So the Emirate of Dubai you can see right here, and there's a little bit of it over here as well, with the capital of Dubai right here being Dubai. All the, the capital cities of each emirate is the, the name of the emirate. Just anyway. Dubai is the largest city in the emirates, and it is very famous worldwide in that its main focus is tourism and business. So it is full of incredible sights, huge skyscrapers, including the biggest in the world, the Burj Khalifa. It has the world's largest shopping mall. It has an indoor ski resort, I guess. It has so many things, theme parks and adventures and glamorous hotels and glamorous homes and massive man-made islands out here. We'll talk about that a bit in its history, but it's very glitz and glamour in Dubai. And that's due to its oil wealth. It doesn't have as much as Abu Dhabi, but it does have plenty. Next, we're going to look at Sharjah, which is the number two you can see right here. Sharjah, with, there's the capital. And Sharjah is the cultural center of the Emirates. Sharjah also has lots of fabulous buildings, but its buildings are mainly about Emirati history and culture and beautiful mosques, museums, all of the above memorials and plenty of things to discover up there and it's a lot more family friendly than Dubai is and you might be wondering you can see up here all of these emirates are very very small compared to Dubai and Abu Dhabi and that's mainly because there's just not a lot up here it's mostly desert and mountains and not much else Ajman, you can see, is this little one right here, and it has a little bit right there. But Ajman has, well, it has a very traditional port that was used for pearling, which, again, we'll talk about in its history. That port's now mainly used for ship repairs and various repairs to their equipment in the mining industry. There's also a lot of farming there, too. There's lots of different farmings in all of the other emirates. We have, let's see, number three right here is Umal Koin, which is the hardest one to say for me, apparently. Uh, this one is mostly um, a lot of nothing, too, but it does have a lot of wildlife in it. It's built a lot of wildlife sanctuaries within it. There's tons of wildlife sanctuaries all throughout the Emirates, but the, it's a tiny place, so the majority of it is for the wildlife. Let's see, the number four is Ras Al Khaimah, and you can see it takes up over here and over here. It's very strangely shaped, and um, also a lot of farming happening in these. And by farming, I mean fruits, vegetables, dates, etc. The last one up here, Al Fujayura, is the only one on the Gulf of Oman. It's not on the Persian Gulf. And it also has farming, but it's mainly farming like um, dairy, and poultry, and those kind of farms. Not so much growing farms like animal farms can see the highest point up here in the mountains. It's the Jabal, sorry, Jabal Ybir. There we go. And those are the Emirates of the United Arab Emirates. So let's go back to this map. Let me think if there's any other geographic things I wanted to point out. I don't, I think I've got everything I wanted to show you. You can see all the major cities there, the capitals of each Emirate. So what is an Emirate? An emirate is ruled by an emir, which is a kind of Muslim ruler. There's quite a, a bunch. Sort of like how a kingdom's ruled by a king, a duchy is ruled by a duke. It's one of those things. So just don't worry about it. Just go with it. And a lot of people don't realize that the way the emirates looks politically, physically, 
economically is completely different than what it was a hundred years ago. It would be unrecognizable a hundred years ago. In fact, I checked out another history book about the UAE that was published in 2009, 2010-ish. And the pictures of Abu Dhabi and Dubai were unrecognizable. It was just like a smattering of skyscrapers here and there. The big fancy hotel on the coast of Dubai had just been built, which um, now compared to some of the more glamorous buildings they have, it's kind of not as impressive anymore. So it has really, really grown. So let's talk about why. It's an interesting little history. So our story begins up in the Al Hajar Mountains. That's where a lot of evidence of like early human tools and things have been found. Also a lot of evidence that this is where people lived that formed societies that traded with Mesopotamia just up the gulf there and also Harappa which would have been more that way in what's now Pakistan. They mined copper in the mountains and traded that for all of the wonderful goods of Mesopotamia etc. In Sumer, they have a record of the people living here and they called them the Magan, but didn't really elaborate more on these people. They just traded with their friends and focused on farming for the most part. At one point, the Achaemenid Empire, which was a Persian empire up here in what's now Iran, invaded a majority of the Arab Peninsula and they, they did, you know, conquer the area, but it was mostly just people farming, so there wasn't much to do. They did build some forts. They did advance uh, some of the agriculture. The people had already built really extensive canals. Also in Oman, they had built these really cool canals. But that was pretty much it for a lot of its early history. Just people just living their lives out in the desert, in the mountains, along the coast, just living their lives not bothering anybody. Eventually, Islam would arrive very, very early when the Prophet was still alive. It arrived in the year 630 and people took to it very quickly. And the oases out here became trading routes for a lot of the Muslim worlds around the peninsula and beyond because land trading was happening on the camels and they need places to rest. So a lot of these oases became very important rest stops. And eventually a lot of these territories gained their own rulers, etc., etc., their own important settlements and what have you, which essentially formed the not so much the emirates we have today, but the families that controlled them was shaped during this time, and they've been ruling there ever since, like seventh century. Eventually, the most important of these sheikdoms would have been the Baniyas, which you can see here. Its name would evolve over time, but it controlled what is now Abu Dhabi. It would definitely dominate, dominate until its current history. The Portuguese were the first to arrive in this area. They really tried to control the Strait of Hormuz up here. So they came into the territory, built some forts, tried to control the port areas, but the British would come by trading from India and they were bigger and better than a lot of the Portuguese ports at the time. So they started to dominate and the British complained that there were pirates coming from the coast along here after they would sail around the strait, they would get attacked by pirates and they would say, knock it off. And Apparently, to this day, they, um, the Emirates, uh, which one was it? I think it was Ras al Khaimah, had most of the pirates, the, the pirates. They say that they'd never had pirate raids against the British, that it's made up by imperialism, blah, blah, blah. Who knows? Either way, the, the British, you know, the British weren't liars, but they did exaggerate. So who knows, right? So they were complaining, hey, you've got to stop raiding our ships. These people are like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so they had to come to some kind of agreement. There was a little bit of conflict, but essentially in 1820, the British and the sheikdoms over here came to a truce. 
and they agreed that nobody here would bother the British ships, and in return the British would protect them. This truce would change over the 19th century, but in a nutshell that's what it was. And this area became known as the Trucial States, as in the, the truce, the Trucial States. Once that was enforced, and they had this very strong friend in their corner, the, the rulers here and the people here realized that things got peaceful really quick. Like, there was very little to fight over. So, some economic prosperity started. And the pearling industry, which became an industry at this point, along the coast up here really started to kick off. And pearling back then was very treacherous. They didn't have like scuba gear or anything like that. They would literally just dive in the water and 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 look for the the oysters. That sounds very terrifying. So, but they were very good at it. And they would go out in their dows for months at a time, diving and snatching up pearly oysters. And they became very profitable. And thanks to the British protecting them, they really didn't have anyone bothering them, so they could just focus on catching pearls and building up their industry. It really started to thrive uh, throughout the um, 19th and into the 20th century until two things happened. One was the Great Depression, which people weren't buying jewelry anymore. There was no need for pearls. And also the Japanese developed cultivated pearls. So it was far cheaper to get cultivated pearls than pearls found at the bottom of the Persian Gulf. So the industry started to tank, and that really hurt the people up here. So the British started looking for oil in this area. Actually, in the 1920s, they started to poke around, but it wasn't until the 1950s that they really started to get serious about it. And eventually, by the early 1960s, they found it. And boy, did they find it. They they really struggled for a long time trying to find something. When they did, they were like, holy moly, it's a lot of oil. So oil was found outside Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Tons of it. Can't stress that enough. And obviously, the people here were very excited and started to profit off of that and improve their lives. However, the British Empire was crumbling at this point. Some things had to give, one of which was the protection they had promised the um, Trucial States. By 1968, they announced they could no longer afford to protect. If anyone attacked, they wouldn't have the resources available to defend them, and they were just going to pull out completely. And they, they really tried to ask the British to stay, particularly the sheikh in charge of Abu Dhabi. That would have been um, Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan al Nahyan. But the British could not. And uh, things needed to be done quickly because Iran literally started to like move into their islands once the British began to pull out. And Saudi Arabia was like preparing to lay claim down here. So there were two huge powers about to come in and overwhelm these tiny areas. So the Sheikh got all the other sheiks together. And on December 2nd, 1971, they formed the United Arab Emirates. They combined their emirates into one country, kind of like the United States in a way, right? There was a sort of agreement about how this government would run. It was agreed upon in 1972. First of all, Raj al Khaimah didn't join right away. Um, they did in 1972. And um, the parts up here wanted to stay with Oman. Qatar and Bahrain decided to go independent, not join in. But in 1972, they formed the Federal National Council, which is essentially all of the sheiks of each emirate that come together and agree on the politics of the country. And in theory, they're supposed to vote on the president, but it's sort of agreed upon that whoever is running Abu Dhabi is the president of the Emirates. So um, Sheikh Zayed became president and the vice president is always going to be the Sheikh of Dubai. It's I don't think that's like written down, it's just kind of agreed upon. So while they do come together every four years to vote on a new president, it's always the same one. 
So the Emirates came together, they pooled their money together and started developing this country like you wouldn't believe. They built, you know, the huge skyscrapers, the luxurious buildings, all of the incredible tourist attractions, and they kept one-upping themselves and just making things bigger and better. And that really shows in the islands off of Dubai. They made these man-made islands in the shape of palm trees, in the shape of the world, intending for them to be luxury housing and resorts and theme parks. But this was right at the 2008 economic crisis. So um, the bigger of the Palm Islands was never completed. It's the islands all filled in, but there's not really anything on it. The world islands, like they're a bunch of like islands clustered together. So when you look from above, it looks like the world, only a handful of them have anything on it. So it's sort of flopped. There's one Palm Island that's mostly built upon, and it's pretty cool, but, you know, um, I don't think it was as big a hit as they thought it was going to be. But they're slowly but steadily trying to do something with these islands that they made over time. And then the Burj Khalifa project was built. It was originally called the Burj Dubai, but they started to run out of money. So, um... The Sheik at the time funded it. Oh my gosh, I forgot to mention. So in 2004, Sheik Zayed passed away. His son, Khalifa bin Zayed al Nahyan, became president. So he, he bailed out the project. So now it's the Burj Khalifa. And, you know, all of the luxuriousness that we associate with Dubai and the Emirates today happened mostly during the 2010s. Just insane development across Sharjah, Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Um, lots of land reclamation, building like gardens and wonderful places for the wildlife where there used to be nothing. All kinds of things. It's, you can't even list them all. And actually the year I'm recording this, 2022, Sheikh Khalifa passed away. His brother Mohammed bin Zayed al Nahyan is now the president of the Emirates. And that's essentially where we are today. Just prosperity. They're only going up from here. They're developing a, a Mars, like, program. Like, not landing on Mars, but studying Mars, sending satellites into orbit around Mars. It's there. The sky's the limit up here. So anyway, let's flip through the book and show you what this place looks like. It's pretty wild. Like, um... Yeah. It's insane. <laughs> and um, I, I kind of wish I hadn't returned that book of the old pictures of Dubai, where it was just like, small skyscraper, small skyscraper, small skyscraper, and that was it. Because now it looks like this. Now it's skyscrapers everywhere. This is a newer book, so they've got some uh, topical photos there, people in masks. But they're, um, you know, they're wearing masks for COVID, but also sandstorms are a thing here. So masks have been normalized for a while. This is Sharjah, which not a lot of people think of when they think of the UAE. They usually think of all the luxuries of Dubai. You don't realize that there are other massive cities being built along the coast. This is the view from the Palm Jumeirah, I believe it is, the, the one Palm Island that they built upon. So over here is Dubai. There's a road that leads out here, and then all these fan out like a big palm tree, and you can see some houses there. And it's still not fully developed. You can see that there's still a lot of plots that haven't been snatched up, but the center here has the big resort and all of that. And then the rest of it looks like this, just sand and more sand. There's a little wadi area over here, some plants growing along it. What else do we have? A beautiful tree here. It's the Gulmahar tree, it's called, it says. And then of course date palms have been important since forever in this area. 
Here's Serbanios, the island I showed you before, which now you can go on safari on it. Did I mention that Banios was the name of the original family, the Al Nahyan, that rule Abu Dhabi and thus the Emirates anyway? There's a beautiful gazelle and a sweet desert hedgehog. How cute. <laughs> Let's see what else we have. There's the Dubai Museum. Looks like some old fort turned into a museum. A beautiful mosque up there. I want to say this is in Sharjah. I'm pretty sure. A monument for the pearlers. The pearling industry. Big black pearl up there. This also in Sharjah. Some old forts. This is in Al Fujayura up in the mountains. And also, in the same emirate, in what looks like an oasis right there. There's the flag. The flag was designed by... Oh, I was reading this on Wikipedia. I think he was like 19 and it was like a contest. And today that person works as the, like, um, diplomat to the Czech Republic for the emirates. How interesting. There's Sheikh Khalifa. It's very sad. I didn't know he passed away before I started researching this. It was, let's see, it's August now. He passed away in May 2022, so it's very recent. And let's see, this is the Gulf Cooperation Council, which um, they meet with a lot of other countries around the Gulf. There's Sheikh Said. He's still a very beloved figure throughout the Emirates. He's the father of the Emirates. That's in the Dubai Mall, the world's largest shopping mall by area, I should say. There's the skyline of Dubai. Of course, there's the Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest building. And you know what's funny? I was playing GeoGuessr just by myself, not recording, and it dropped me off here. Like, I swear, I looked around and I was like, are you serious? And I looked and saw this. I was like, yeah, I know literally exactly where I am. It literally dropped me off at this point right here on the freeway. Isn't that funny? I knew literally exactly where I was. The camel. Isn't that an iconic picture? Riding in the sand, the dusty sun in the background. And even more iconic of the Emirates, the oil wells in the desert. Here is their currency. It's called the Durham. This is the stock exchange, and uh, you can see this was during the pandemic, so it's pretty empty. Oh, see, here's a sandstorm day, so these kids are protecting their lungs, because it's the sand's blowing in. What else do we have? Oh, this is part of the World Islands, which... If you look at this picture, you're like, that doesn't look anything like the world. You have to zoom out to see them, but you can see that there's been some developments on some of them, but it's pretty much what it looks like today. This book is very, very recent. It came out a few months ago, so a few months ago, like January, <laughs> but still. <clears throat> Pardon me. Let me drink some tea. Hold on. Mm -mm. Got some chamomile here. It's still kind of warm. Anyway. Um, lots of date palms there. Oh, this is talking about the date palm conference. People preserving those very important trees. And a little bird reserve here. Another scene in Dubai. There's a little fountain here. I think this is the chapter that talks about it. I probably should have mentioned it in history. But, um, oh, see, here's that very fancy luxury hotel that was built. And now it's just like, oh, okay, and that's not as impressive. Here's a Bedouin man offering you some tea. Oh, it doesn't talk about it here, maybe in the next chapter. Anyway, but I'm going to say, when we look at this lovely family here, is that only, what is it, 11% of the population are Emiratis. The rest are, um, like, migrant workers. Not migrant workers, but um, um, expats, right? mostly from Southeast Asia, 
working all of the jobs needed to run a massive city like this. This is the court building in Sharjah. See some dows there on the water. Very traditional boats. And this is Abu Dhabi. Isn't that incredible? Very, very beautiful skyscrapers. And it's definitely getting built up too, isn't it? A little cafe area here. This is in Dubai. I hope it's time for prayer here. And this beautiful mosque, I think. Oh no, this is it. This is the Sheikh Zayed Mosque. It's a very beautiful place. It doesn't say, oh, it says it's in Abu Dhabi. And they're breaking their Ramadan fast, eating some food now that the sun is set. Also working hard in school. Working very hard on handwriting. Very beautiful language. Reading the newspaper. Is that Jimmy Fallon? Yes, <laughs> it is. And stop. In English and Arabic. So cool. I love when cities have these art displays when they have like just a thing. Like in San Francisco, we have hearts. And then they're all placed throughout the city and painted differently by different artists. Beautiful henna. A tradition mostly for brides before their wedding. And this person's making a basket the old-fashioned way by weaving. And look at this piece of modern art. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. And some beautiful pottery as well. That's gorgeous. And there's a Tao. This is at the Dubai Museum, it says. So there's a, a Tao there, you can see. Some traditional music playing there. And they're doing a traditional dance. And decorating a bowl, looks like. Very pretty. Cool. <laughs> Super rad. Sandboarding. And big water park. This is the Wild Wadi Water Park near Jumeirah. Very cool. I love water parks. <laughs> and camel race is about to begin. I've been reading how they've started replacing camel jockeys with robots now. Um, just so um, apparently children, like traditionally, not so much anymore, but like children were kidnapped out of villages if they were small enough and forced to raise camels, which is wow. But um, now they can use robots to race on the camels, so the camels can go faster and people can have more precise control. Also, of course, falconry practiced for a very, very long time. There's a regatta here, having a boat race. And this is at Ski Dubai. It's an indoor ski slope. Is that not incredible? In the desert. Oh, how beautiful. This is a mosque in Sharjah all lit up for some occasion. Probably National Day or something, I'm not sure. Or a holiday. This is holy. Like I said, there are many, many um, Southeast Asian people living in the Emirates. So, um, Hindu festivals and various other uh, festivals from other cultures are still um, celebrated. Even Christmas. There are Christians living there as well. So, Having a big meal. Apparently that's camel. And lots of rice. Lots of veggies here. Making some bread. Since so it's for Ramadan, so they have to make a lot of bread. And a cafe area. You can see lots of tourists here. Or business people from not this part of the world. Look at this. <laughs> An Emirati Burger King. With, what's on the menu here at Burger King? The California Whopper. <laughs> what's that? Probably has avocado on it or something. And a more traditional meal here. That looks very, very good. There's some delicious looking bread. 
Yeah, this kind of looks like hummus. What is it? Wheat, chicken, cinnamon. Hmm, interesting. Here's the map I showed you already. And then here is where the Emirates are located in the world. All right, so that's going to be it for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. Of course, a loud car goes by right at the end. Anyway, I hope that you have a very good, good, good night. Good night.